it's like I'm filling up and then I'm gonna explode with like all of these thoughts and I always feel it in my shoulders when I'm getting anxious or worried about something it's like this weird bubbly feeling in my shoulders Angel has struggled with loneliness since a young age. I think there is a possibility that it could have been passed on to me um, because again, we are so close and we're very similar. I look up to her, I copy her. So it's probably natural that things like that I've picked up from her. Loneliness is something Angel and her mum have in common. They support each other, but it can be tough. I was born in London, but actually we moved to Lincolnshire when I was really, really young. There's nobody who looks like me there, really. I'm really tall, mixed race, so I didn't really fit in in my school. Uh, so. I always stood out and I really desperately wanted to fit in. Angel thought university in London would be a new beginning, but her mental health issues followed her. I felt like everybody was managing to make friends and they were going out after class for a drink or anything like that and I was never invited and I thought I was doing something wrong. I just wanted to shut myself away. It's a gloominess, it's a grey cloud almost where you couldn't say that there was anything particularly wrong, but it felt not right. Kirsty's loneliness started when she became a mum. In social situations, she found it hard to adapt. I can still remember going to a local Costa Coffee and I was conscious of people looking at me, sort of feeling like I was being judged Loneliness is this kind of inner feeling that you're lacking something, you're not connecting. And we tend to talk about this cognition, so in your head you know you're lonely, you can feel that, that you're lonely, you can name it, and it, it leaves you with this emotional feeling that's quite painful and distressing. I maybe realised how bad my loneliness was when I was actually speaking to my mum on FaceTime when I was in my student accommodation. My mum definitely helped me with some aspects of how I was feeling because she has suffered from anxiety and depression and loneliness herself. So we were able to relate to each other and she helped me to try and get through it. But it's hard because she was suffering herself as well and then her daughter was. So that made her feel even worse. We know there are hereditary links with loneliness, so we know that there is there is some factor genetic that might be leading to a link between mothers and child's loneliness. Um, being parented by somebody that's in that loneliness state and has been in that mood mind frame for a long time means that we might transmit some of those negative feelings. I don't want to pass my loneliness on to my children because I want them to be able to feel comfortable with others and know that they can go to a place and not feel like they have, that they're not going to fit in. If, if I'm feeling very lonely and I feel quite isolated and rejected, when my child comes home from school and they've had a similar experience, I'm more likely to want to support them and comfort them and be with them through that awful thing that's happening to them. Whereas I'm not encouraging them necessarily to brush it off their shoulders. My son will come home from school and I can still remember there was one day he came back saying, I made a friend. And I thought, it was fantastic how excited he was about this. And I'm like, what's his name? Well, I can't remember the name. And then the next day, was your friend in today? No, he wasn't in today. And then for some reason, this friend hasn't came back since. Just as Kirsty's trying to help her children, Angel's mum is too. She couldn't help how she was feeling and what she was going through. She doesn't want any of this either, so she would take it all away if she could and she's always saying to me when I'm upset and anxious and feeling lonely and depressed like if she could take all of that bad feeling from me and take it on herself even though she already suffers with all of that she would. I don't want my, my son to be lonely but I think it's still something I need to get past my sort of social anxieties to be able to help him with his, not, ne not necessarily his but help him to be able to form new relationships. Angel's loneliness drove her to leave university and go back home. Now she's been able to move on with her life. I do still feel lonely. Um, I'm in a relationship, 
I'm close to my family, but that loneliness is still there and I don't know if it's ever going to go. But I just feel overall things have improved a lot. Nicola Carroll, BBC London.